the Knights of Morgan are on the march. Yeah! Anvil of War! Army focus! So today we are joined by Wayne and his awesome collection of the Knights of Morgan, a custom knight's household. Uh, he also have a battalion detachment, give or take, give or take of Space Marines, the Hunters of Hunters Orion. Of Orion, yeah. So um, beautiful models, Thank and you. this was a custom creation by you. Um, the household's Absolutely. custom, the Space Marine chapters custom. Yep. The models are customized. Yep. <laughs> um, <laughs> so let's let's go into the uh, sort of the the lore behind your army and your okay. uh, your factions here. So tell me a little bit about your um, this home world that you've created okay. for these guys. So I'll just kind of go back through the just the entire genesis of it because the two chap the space marine chapters and the knights are kind of intertwined in their history. So. Um, they're from the planet Orion, which is essentially a Pandora world okay. um, and was settled by people of, let's say, Scottish descent from, from Earth at one point in time. Okay. And then during the Long Night, like many other Imperial worlds, they descended um, into some sort of primitive nature. So the locals are of a barbaric, kind of druidic, cult, uh, Celtic kind of culture. Um, at some point in that, in, the, in that time, a knight household was founded on their world. These guys from the Knights of Morrigan. And they essentially patrol the woods, protecting the uh, locals from many of the uh, monsters that would otherwise beset, ruin, or destroy their worlds from the um, deep wilds. These guys spend so much time patrolling out in the woods that leaves and seeds and stuff start to like, drop on the back of their armor and the aggressive fauna just simply starts to grow upon their armor, um, kind of making them one with the woods. And they're so common and they're so regular that even the animals have come to kind of accept their presence. So you have a lot of the little critters who are, are floating around with them. <laughs> yeah, you've got little like uh, wood elf sprites that you've converted and thrown on here. All yeah, around. very like bright and glowing colors, very Pandora from Avatar okay. um, inspired. Um, so then they protect, protected the world until the Great Crusades when the planet was discovered and brought back into compliance by an unknown space marine chapter at the time, and a space marine bastion was built upon the world. Okay. Um, the world itself is not of a lot of strategic importance, so at the, out at the outset of the Horus Heresy, the planet was abandoned by the space marines and largely once again forgotten from Imperial history for a number of years. Um, later, upon its rediscovery, the um, administratum decided that they would found a space marine chapter in the area again, within the bastion that had since been overgrown by the woods. And so now the space marines recruit from the druidic people, um, as well as inherited a lot of their cultures and similar cultures to the uh, knights, in, including intentionally growing things on their armor as sort of like a, a, like a, a sign or a ritual that the world has accepted them. Um, would you say it's like kind of like a death world, essentially? In more in, in more ways, yes, I would say okay. it, it, it's not a happy place to live. Even <laughs> though it's uh, rather, it would be a rather beautiful place. But the between the fauna and the animals and stuff, it's uh, not a happy place for primitive humans to live. So tell me a little bit about the inspiration. Where did where did this all come from? What was your what was the uh, inspiring factor for you? Did you really like, you know, uh, <laughs> tree ants from Lord of the Rings or? <laughs> so, so yes, I, I did very much like the ants. They were always one of my favorite parts as a kid. <laughs> okay. um, and I think I, I always kind of wanted to play wood elves in, in fantasy, but I never got around to doing it. The, the real inspiration came probably about four years ago when I, um, I found a picture online. A guy did a one-off set of a Terminator okay. um, as a druidic Terminator. And I tried to track the guy down and never could find him. He didn't seem to do any of the other work on it. So just a kind of a one-off. And so I decided to do up a couple Space Marines see of it. See, it. see if I liked it. Um, and then I'm like, oh no, this looks really good. And so then <laughs> I had to- What have I done? What have I done? <laughs> and so then I had to do a whole army. And so, the, so I ended up doing a whole army. Then at some point in time, uh, I got a knight box. Okay. And at the time I really wasn't into knights. And I'm like, well, what do I do with this guy? So I decided to do this guy. Um, okay. He was, the, he, he was the first. He was uh, at the time. It was actually the last of his household because I was only going to make him like a free blade. Okay. Um, so he was Abernath, the last of his house. Boy, were you wrong. 
Yeah, boy, was I wrong. <laughs> so I did him up kind of just to join the Space Marines. Um, I didn't know what else to do with him at the time, and I wasn't really planning on expanding. Then a number of years later, uh, friends of mine from my group, we, uh, they kept harping on me. Hey, you should do a whole night of these guys, a whole night of these guys. So about a year ago, actually, about now, um, I decided to do up a full night army of these guys for Las Vegas Open in January. Okay. So over the course of... That's ambitious. It, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I certainly uh, had to really push it to get it done, but okay. I ended up getting uh, the four armagers and two more nights done in about four months for Las Vegas Open in that February. Well, they are beautiful and stunning. I can tell you right now, just like the amount of detail that went into these and the amount of love is... It's staggering. It is. It has actually been truly an entertaining project to to do, and I've learned so much because this is kind of. I mean, this is the first guy, and that's the last one. Like, he's he's the, he most the most recent. Most re yeah. um, and and even the like the work that went in between the two of them. There's a. It, it, it's quite a step. Quite Valiant, a step forward. Eh? Yeah. Valiant. Not, Valiant, not no, the Castell. Not the Castell. And I've got the weapons waiting at home, <laughs> yeah. but uh, <laughs> I didn't. I didn't want to play what everybody else was. Playing, yeah. So. No. And it's. I mean, it's very cool. It very. It gives this whole like. You, you've got a lot of uh, melee, obviously, aside from these yep. two boys. You've got, you know, you can tell that you went, yeah. you went that direction. Normally, with your normally two gallants. And, On uh, the tabletop, what do you typically run? So, them uh, so I'm going to Du Bois in. Uh, I'll see you there in, in November. Fantastic! <laughs> I'm running the Valiant, two gallants, and then these two, then these four guys. Okay, cool. So not a lot of shooting, but uh, just more melee. Yeah. What do you typically use for a household? Uh, I normally use Crast, or Crast. I now use Crast. Yeah, I, okay. I used to use uh, Hawk Shroud a lot. Yeah. Okay. Interesting. Because well, I was I was working under the impression, and still is, that you know if they're going to live on the board for a long time, you really want them to uh, perform at maximum for as long as humanly possible. That makes sense. So six of one, half a dozen the other. I've now seen the light of Crast. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and why everybody takes that? Then? Well, yeah. and, and to me, it makes the War Glaives actually worth it. Yeah. Like because they can actually hit. They don't have a lot of attacks, so now they can actually hit with the Crast. Uh, yeah. With with that ability. And what does so. hurt, hurt? So. Yeah. That's... Exactly. Okay, so let's talk about the marine aspect of this army. So it came first. Yep. Uh, so I wanted to. So I really liked what I found online. Found that example, and then I painted up a couple op, like a couple test models, and it just looked so good. And my friends were like, "Oh God, you got to do a whole army of these." And so I started working on it. And the project just kind of evolved naturally on its own, adding one thing after okay. the other. So you base them on the space yep. wolves, yep. Um, just because of the kind of druidic uh, absolutely, yeah, yeah, the Celtic theme, yeah. and I like the close combatiness of the space wolves right. and, and such like that. Well, and it, I guess it does make sense. It ties in with the the overall lore and yep. the, the the world that you've created yep. for these guys. Um, so they're devout to the Imperium. Absolutely, well, they're without, loyal. Okay, without a fault. Yeah, so they're not Nurgle. <laughs> they are not Nurgle. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, let's talk about a little bit about the conversions and everything okay. that's on uh, on your bases. Uh, I can say right now that you have probably some of the most stunning bases I've seen <laughs> on like individual models for some time. So, so um, yeah. So um, I'll, I'll start with the paint job, kind of. The, yeah. uh, so the paint job is actually, when we get close enough to see it, the, all the runes are meant to indicate uh, individual battles, and the dots are me meant to represent kills oh, okay. um, in those battles, in theory. So you get kind of like different, different colors of dots represent different types of things that it's killed. Um, and so these guys, being knights, and they've lived a very, very long time, are covered from head to toe. Yeah, they've got um, the hundreds. On, on a lot of my space marines, like the tactical marines, they're not covered in, in head to toe. They've got a couple, but okay. not not tons. Whereas the veteran guys will be co are, are covered head to toe okay. as well. Um, for the bases, I, I'm, I'm a huge basing fan. I think it, um, it, it really completes the army. It builds the army. Um, and I, I almost put more time thinking about basing than I do uh, the army itself. For instance, I've got a custodes army on my, on my desk that I've wanted to build and paint for Almost two years now. You're doing the green glow and everything. Yeah, the, the green glow. But it took me nearly a year and a half to decide on basing. Okay. Because I, I could not get over the hump of where I wanted my, my custodes to be fighting, what, like, what I wanted to describe them as. Um, so I finally settled on something I like, but... A world. A world, essentially. I got tired of them not being painted. <laughs> <laughs> so, so I put a, a ton of effort into these. Kind of, you know, they're marching through the forest floor of their world. Uh, they're on patrol or whatnot. Um, and, and especially for the Valiant, I took a lot of effort going in, on hikes in Gatineau, 
um, a park not far from here, just to kind of like what a real forest floor actually looks like. I kind of winged it on these other ones. Yeah, I can actually um, see this, yeah. But I took some photos and how the rock looks with the lichen and stuff, because I think it really fleshes out the army. Where are they fighting? Who are they fighting? Why are they there? Um, it really completes the model. Yeah. It, it completes the model. It's, yeah, it, it finishes the story, right? The more you put into the basing, the more you put into the effort of just the little details. Yeah. Like um, when you're looking at um, not just the base, but the model and how you kind of had all the foliage kind of grow up. The I'm, I'm guessing that you did a lot, of, like I, I can see a mixture of pieces here, yep. but some of the um, the root structures and the vines and everything on the models, that was done with green stuff? Correct, yeah. Okay. So, so these guys have roots and vines on, on their tops done with green stuff. Um, most of the trees on the Valiant are, 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 are model train trees. Okay. Same with on these guy, on the two armages in yeah, front. Yeah, I can see the Woodland Phoenix. Um, this was the guy, I, I didn't quite have the idea of buying trees from the store to do, so they're actually all Wood Elf Dryad arms and stuff like that. Yeah. And then I glued flock to it. It's to funny give it that, that you wanted to go the wood elf direction and yep. then you ended up using wood elf parts. <laughs> all oh, I think I, I think I sold eBay <laughs> out of wood elf bits for yeah. probably a year. <laughs> so you're the guy. <laughs> yeah. You've got um, just the little spites and everything all yep. over the place. I love that. I love the look of it and how that's like kind of tied into the creatures yeah. being and them being kind of cr not necessarily at one, but yeah, they're accepted. Yeah, they've accepted the fact that they're, yeah. uh, they're they've become part of the foliage. So, um, yeah, just beautiful army, and yeah. uh, I'm unbelievably impressed with it. So, uh, thank you again for coming. Yeah, we really appreciate great. it. Um, any additions? Anything that you want to add to this uh, army, this collection, or do you think you're? So I think so. I'm going to add probably. I really want to get a Perforion. Okay. I want to get a Perforion because it's got so much space on its back to you work with. Do I don't. I don't know what I would do with it. Be like but the World Tree kind of thing. Exactly, <laughs> something like that. Okay. Uh, I think I really would like to get a Perforion. I don't know if that's in the cards yet, but I think my aim is to get just get another guy, and then um, I want to do it up competition-wise for probably for. Um, Nova next year. Okay. Because uh, I went to Nova, competed with him at Nova this year. Didn't do as well as I had hoped, but that's fine. It was first time in a major competition. I was going to say, you're a, um, you're a hobby first kind of guy. Anyway, <laughs> exactly. So, 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 yeah. so then I uh, got a plan, a good pose, and a good theme to that one. I got okay. some really good advice from a couple really, really top end painters uh, on, on what I can do next to improve. and. You know, button up and do next year, but I'll be back to visit these guys. But for now, I'm done painting green. I can't wait to see it, man. <laughs> I know we uh, we definitely will do a follow up on our page if you'll uh, let 100%. us and, and post up pictures from your. Uh, we'll come play a game. Yeah, <laughs> and uh, you guys can follow him on Instagram. We'll actually tag his Instagram in our uh, post, so Absolutely. check out some more of his work. And uh, thank you no, so thank much you. for coming. Thanks for having me. Sponsored by. <laughs>